welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Cassie, also known as Nitty Cass, and I'm here to talk a little bit about what's on my needles, the books that I am reading, some patterns I'm drooling over, and um, some mental health issues. Grab your favorite beverage. I usually have Pepsi, but this morning I have some coffee. It was date night last night, and we stayed up really late, so I am definitely needing some coffee this morning. So grab your beverage grab something to work on and join me for a little while. Today is March 7th, Sunday, March 7th. And the first thing I wanna go over is some finished objects. So this one you've seen for quite some time. This is the dotted ray shawl. I might've shown it on last podcast that I'm finished, but I couldn't remember. So it starts right here at a point and then comes out about and it just gets longer and longer and longer. And I have a couple of ends to weave in, but that is finally done. Then I also finished these socks that you've been seeing forever. These are the Blorange socks. And um, I've explained this a couple of times, but when I was little, I had a blue and orange stuffed sock and I named him Blorange. And I just love the way that orange and blue play together. So um, let's see if you can see it. There's a bunch of different colors in the orange and it's got like a Stellina base. So it's got some silvery, if I can get you to see it. There we go, I move it. It's got some silver stuff in it. So both pairs of the blue orange socks are finished. And if you look closely, this is a dark blue heel and I couldn't find the yarn. So this is actually, a variegated blue and this toe is variegated and this toe is not but um it doesn't bother me it makes me unique so there's that and then we did this newt to me cow or brioche make along so you could choose if you wanted to do something that you haven't done before and try a new skill or a, like if you haven't knit a sweater you can knit a sweater and then um or you could choose to do brioche. And brioche is a stitch pattern that on one side, one of the colors will stick out and it kind of is raised above the rest of them. And on the inside, the opposite color is sticking out. So it technically could be a reversal project. This is the brioche bandana cow. Let's see. So it's designed so that, you know, you have something nice and warm on your neck and then it comes down a little bit so that when you put your jacket on, this is my jacket, keeps you nice and cozy um, and it's not too much on your neck. So there's that piece and I just love the way it looks. I took a really bright variegated, uh, well, I guess it's not variegated. It has yellow and orange and pink and red and it's the yarn that I designed last summer with the Knit Crate Make Your Own Yarn kit, and then this red that I had laying around. And I just love the way that the colors play against each other. And then I have, oh, if you hear a noise in the background, my husband is a lineman and he climbs poles and fixes the fiber optic cable or makes a new run. And so he has these things called gas. And I'll try to put a picture in here, but basically they strap around your leg and they have this little hook that comes out, kind of looks like a spur. And then it has, you know, like a, a straight down hook. And that's to help them climb the poles and like stick into them. So he was climbing at work and one of those pieces hit like a, a metal piece on the pole and it bent it. So technically it's not safe for him to keep using those. So we went to the hardware store this morning and he got an extractor bit. So he is taking off the old bent gaff and putting a new one in. So if you hear some like banging loud noise in the background, I apologize, but we have no kids here today. We had date night last night. And so I definitely wanted to take the opportunity to do my podcast. So I think this is my last finished object. So this is a dishcloth. And I'd like to knit 12 this year, just so I can have some or I can give some. And this is, um, um, I don't know the brand, but it's Dishy. And so it's 
see if I can find what it's made out of. Dishy. Okay, so Premier Home Cotton. So it's cotton. And it's kind of thick. So this is just your basic knit one row, next, knit the next row. It makes that nice kind of crunchy pattern. It's really good for washing things. Um, I like them for dishcloths in my sink because it really helps. It acts like a scrubby at the same time as a washcloth. Maybe that's it for finished objects. And I have quite a few whips for me. You've seen this one. This is my favorite whip by far. This is the Stardust Sweater by Dragon Horde Yarn. It's a little bit better. So that is the front panel. It's got, uh, what is it, sport weight? I think it's sport weight, fingering or sport weight, but it looks more like a sport weight. And then held double with mohair, and it gives it that nice kind of halo effect. And then because I didn't match the mohair exactly to this color, it, they're kind of a bit of a contrast. It gives like a vintagey look to the sweater. So I super can't wait to wear it. And I did put a stitch marker in when I picked it up from the last podcast. So I really haven't done a whole lot. This is the stitch marker from the last podcast. So I'll move it in just a minute. And this is, let's see if I can show you this one. This is Luna Lovegood by Simply Servings. Her name is Lindsay, I believe. I'll talk more about her in a little bit. So let me move that marker. And then the next time I podcast, we can see how much project I have made. Or progress I have made. Oh, I forgot to mention, I am podcasting in a very new spot. So a few weeks ago, maybe just a week ago, I made my yarn wall, which I have been dreaming over for a very long time. So I got kind of a, a cheap put together shelf for now. I'll go a little more expensive later on. And I put most of them in color schemes. And then I have my cozy memories blanket with a couple of fingering yarns to go in it that, that I haven't used yet. This is my leftover fingering yarn. This is sport weight yarn. It's not by color. My dishy yarn, rainbow yarn, project bags. And then those are the things that are caked up for my Stardust sweater. The color is not really showing well in here. Okay, so the next whip or work in progress that I'm going to show you is a commission knit. And I have a friend who does most of her day in Zoom meetings. And so she wanted something that she could wear around, like some sort of decorative scarf she could wear that would look stylish. So it doesn't look like much on the needles. This is called the scarf with no name. It's got kind of a lace pattern. If I can stretch it out a little bit for you. It's got... Yeah, it's not coming up here, but it's making kind of like a leaf pattern where the holes are. Yeah, it's definitely not going to show up very well until it's blocked. So you kind of get a rough idea, but definitely doesn't look like the picture yet. So I've got quite a bit done, but when I put it on my neck, it's really not that much. <laughs> So I've got quite a bit left. It's a really fun knit. It's a 15 row repeat, but most of the rows are repetitive. This is what it'll look like all blocked out. So I'm pretty excited to see that um, when it's all blocked out since it looks kind of crunchy and can't really see a definite design other than that, that it's lacy. All right. And then I started these yesterday. So I've had this yarn for quite a while. It's from Dragon Horn Yarn. And I had no idea what to do with it. I was going to do a design with it. But then it, the yarn was too busy for the design I wanted to do. And I really like the colors. So I wanted to do something with it. But I didn't have enough for anything beyond socks. 
Um, and then when I was doing the ribbing with this color and then the socks with this color, it just looked kind of um, like flat. It wasn't really calling to me. So I had this weird idea and I didn't know if it was gonna work. I put these two together. And I was like, well, they definitely look very different, but this red might make the reds in here pop out. So let's give it a try. So I cast on the cuff with the red color. Now I'm tangled. I cast on the cuff with this color and then I started knitting with the dragon horde yarn and I love the way it works together and it does make the reds in here pop out. And I always suffer from second sock syndrome, which means that you knit up one sock and then you might start the second sock, but your like knitting mojo for the second sock just really just doesn't exist. And that's what happened with those orange socks. So I am doing two at a time. And I stole this um, technique from Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady. And it is that she, so she puts a stitch marker every 10 rows. So if you can see, there's two stitch markers there. And that's so she knows when she's making her sock, how many groups of 10 she has. And that's how she measures like the leg of her sock or even for the foot of her sock. But I know that when she was doing, it was one of the advent calendars around Christmas, she would do a certain number of rows on one sock and a certain number of rows on the other. So I will do 10 rows on one sock, 10 rows on the other sock, and hopefully I will not have second sock syndrome because they will get done about the same time. So that's pretty exciting. I also have a sock pattern going on. I believe I'm going to name it Starborn, and it's inspired by Crescent City, which is a book by Sarah Moss, who happens to be one of my favorite authors. So I'm super excited to share that with you. I just can't seem... I'm playing with it on a colorway that I don't want to release the pattern in, but it's going to help me see the stitch definition and help me revise how I'm writing it. Um, but I think I'm going to go to a couple yarn stores on my next day off and just try to find a yarn that's calling to me for that pattern. So I'm pretty excited about that. And I think that's it for works in progress. Yes. So patterns I'm drooling over. I do not have any of the patterns printed out. Some of them I haven't purchased. So as I talk about them, when I go back and edit, I'll be putting a picture either here or here, and probably this side since my yarn beautiful yarn walls over here. So I will be putting a picture in so you can see the pattern that I'm drooling over. So there is Out of Rhythm Socks by Christy Houghton, The Campfire Cardi by Alicia Plummer. This one I've been drooling over for two years and it's a nice cardigan and in the back it has these little eyelets that get bigger and bigger. I can't remember, I think starting at the waist they're little and then they get bigger and bigger going up and it's supposed to remind you of like the the embers crackling and like little pieces of fire that are floating up at your campfire the one i'm most excited about is rose covered cage mitts by dragon horde design and i actually do have that pattern but i did not print it out yet and i bought it with two yarns that she made the pattern with a special stitch marker um, and then the pattern all rolled into one. So in acquisitions, I will show you the colors and the awesome stitch marker I came with. Um, I also want to knit the Brioche Heart Hat by Jonathan Tallo. It's a pretty cool hat, and the brioche on it makes hearts. It's pretty cool. There's another one by the same guy, and it's called the Brioche Chess Hat. And there's this really neat pattern that kind of alternates which color is going to be brioche and then on the top it makes this amazing star which is stars and hearts are my favorite shape so that's probably what drew me to those patterns and then the butterfly sweater by Galena Shem Shemchuk which of course is no surprise for those of you who know me pretty well butterflies are my favorite animal and I love anything with butterflies and then the star flake by Stephen West which I've talked about a lot it's a shawl 
was one of his mystery shawls a couple of years ago. And it starts with a center panel and then it makes this nice star design going outward. And it's big enough that it can be a blanket, which is why it's called a star blanket. And then I have a shawl with butterflies and I think that's the name of it. But on Corinne Peterson and I'm probably butchering that name. So I'll put those in here. And then for acquisitions, I've got a couple of things to show you. So my first one oops, that I'm most excited about is I now have a wooden ball winder, which has made my life so much easier. Um, if you know, I probably showed out on a past podcast, I did buy a plastic one because it was cheaper and it broke the first night because my husband and son were having a race over who could uh, kick up a ball of yarn the fastest and it broke one of the plastic teeth and doesn't work. So I've got this one and in my box with my uh, blocking mat, I have a Swift. So you can put this on a surface and it comes out kind of like an umbrella and you put, you untwist the hank of yarn Put it around here, which I usually do when it's a bit shrunken. And then I pop it all the way up. And so I have the yarn here. I have a tail coming out. And I can attach the tail to my ball winder. And in one easy step, I have a cake of yarn from the hank, which has been pretty awesome to play with. I actually went through this phase the other day where I just caked up a bunch of yarn so I could play with my toys. Let me just put that back in here. I never remember which way it goes back in. Maybe. I don't know. It's okay. Step back over here. And then my favorite one. Well, okay. Tide. The Tide favorite. Came in this cute little box. And this is from Simply Serving, which is her business card. Simply Serving Handmade Crafts, or Hand Crafts, Lindsay Goodall. Oh, excuse me. And I ordered a bunch of stuff from her. So this is Ron from Harry Potter. Hermione from Harry Potter. Harry Potter. His glasses are kind of like a design on the clay rather than being like black. So I guess you can kind of see it like that. And of course, butter beer. And I love s'mores and campfires, so there was a little star that was supposed to be a s'more. And then, of course, the Luna Lovegood stitch marker, which I'll show again, because who doesn't love Luna Lovegood? Okay. And then I have these two balls of yarn from Dragon, Dragon Horde Design. This color is called Ritual. It's kind of like a deep Merlot color and it's variegated, which is her specialty. And then this color, coming on down a little bit, is called Rose Covered Cage, which is also the name of the pattern. Where did I put that little stitch marker? Okay, so Rose, Covered Cage is a design that's inspired by a series, um, the Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah Moss, of course. And so the first book in that series is called A Court of Thorns and Roses. So this is the exact copy of what the first book looks like on a stitch marker, which is pretty freaking awesome. 
Hmm. I got another nine inch Chowgo nine inch circular, but I can't find it. So I'm pretty sure I cast on a pair of socks and <laughs> stashed it somewhere in the house. And I have no idea where it is, which doesn't surprise me at all because despite the fact that I am super book smart, I am very daffy when it comes to like common sense in real life. I'm super forgetful. I believe that's it for knitting related things. I also am really enjoying this company called, oh no, I missed my, <laughs> I dropped some of the stickers. So there is a company called Tula and it is planning and journaling and different, like you can choose a book and then it has these bands and you can choose what kind of inserts you want. So I do have an insert that has been my checkbook and I like it because it is, whoops, it is bigger and has more room than the traditional tiny ones. And then I got well noted and that is basically just lined papers forever, whatever you want for different notes or reminders, shopping lists. And this one is new to me. This is gratitude by day. And you can open it up. I don't want to show any of mine really. So you can open it up and you can put some, the month and the year. And then every day of that month, you can write something that you're grateful for. And you have the option to do a little word bubble and a picture if you so choose. Mm -hmm. Then my next one is called Storyteller. I do like to write stories. I haven't done so in a little while, but I thought that might be a good prompt to come up with some ideas. And the inside has a place where you can draw a picture and then some lined papers to write your notes. It's also advertised as a really good one for children so they can write their little stories. And then who doesn't like adult coloring? So I have a little coloring book insert which has a couple that are more childish that I could use when we're waiting at the doctor's office but then there's some more intricate ones like I love this one that you could do for stress relief and I am back into coloring so that's been fun and then this last one doesn't really have a name but it's graph paper and so I can use that for you know, outlining, outlining and making a graph for my stitches on my designs. And then I have these really cool sticker sheets, but they fell out. Oh, this is pretty cute. So a lot of people don't, how do I say this? So they're not teaching cursive in school and they're not doing classes like on your own. So they're not teaching kids to balance a checkbook. They're not teaching them to write checks and we know that as adults, that this is a pretty valuable skill, even though most people pay things online or do like the auto renewal, it's still a good idea to be able to learn how to write checks. So my husband was playing with, with Wyatt, one of our children, and they made a fake check, which is super cute. So it's made to the order of my husband. It's a big number. And so it helped him, you know, figure out how to write it on this line. And it's for a truck ram diesel and then it has this little signature so it's super cute and i keep it in here because i don't want to lose it so there's that i will put a link to my tula lady for her um, shopping and facebook page if i remember both i think that's it for acquisitions and then in terms of the knit -a -cast business, my eggnog bliss mitts is now live on Ravelry. So you can um, purchase it there. I do have a discount code. So I will put it down here at the bottom of the screen. Um, and I'll put how much off because I made it a couple weeks ago. And one of my customers pointed out to me that my pattern wasn't actually live, even though I thought so. And apparently I forgot to upload the PDF format. <laughs> so it is now officially live. I have the sock pattern in progress. I also do a monthly knit night. It's usually on the Tuesday I have off after my work weekend. 
So I usually post on in my Facebook business page and on my Instagram page, a little reminder that has the Zoom ID and the code to get in. It's open to anybody. You don't have to be a knitter or crocheter. You could be a cross stitcher or someone who sews or a scrapbooker, anything. It's just a nice place to get together and hang out um, without worrying about spreading COVID and have a connectivity with a crafting community. Below I'll put all my business mentions and while I'm thinking about it, uh, this is a pair of earrings by Basil Designs. Let me take it out. And I meant to wear this on my last podcast, but I forgot. So it's got some nice pink and some beads that I wouldn't even know the names of because my sister is awesome like that and I'm not. Sorry, my bangs are driving me crazy. Um, and then all the other businesses I mentioned, I'll put down in my, my, uh, podcast notes. And then in terms of books, I want to read two books a month. So far, I'm doing pretty good with that. I recently finished Crescent City by Sarah Moss, of course. And I am reading A Court of Silver Flame, which is... The most recent installment of Mass of the Court of Thorns and Roses series. I'm still reading Ready Player Two. I put it down and really haven't picked it up in a couple weeks. Still running kind of slow, but I am curious like how it's gonna turn around. Let's see, what helps my reading? Oh, I just started on audio audible. The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I just started it. It's pretty addictive, but it's not what I imagined yet. So I don't know if there's actually going to be vampires or if it's just kind of a spoof because they like reading um, books about like serial killers and things like that. But we'll give it a go. I like the person who's reading it has like a Southern accent, which is pretty cool because obviously it's Southern Book Club. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly. So Kelly's over here wrecking havoc. She's moved the light that I'm using a couple different times. So if the lighting change, that's what happened. Um, and I'm, I'm just not going to fuss with it. It's fine. And then in terms of life, my husband is working from home now and that's been going pretty good. Um, it's really helped with kids' behavior, my stress level, and just, you know, increasing our relationship because on the weekends it was all about catching up and doing the household chores and there wasn't a lot of time for actual bonding so this has been really great for us what are you needing Callie huh what is going on let's see I'm still loving my job I'm a home health nurse and it's been exciting to have a different type of nursing um yeah, it kind of makes you think a little bit differently, and I'm able to see people get better more often and more frequently. That's kind of, that's the job of all nurses, but a nursing home nurse doesn't always, unless you work on the rehab wing, have the ability to see people really get better. Like, you see them get better from infections, but they don't regain their strength. They don't become, I'm not trying to dish nursing homes, I don't mean that, but like, it's a population where they don't have as much potential to regain their independence in the same way as someone who's still at home. And it's really nice to be able to help people stay at home. And we also have some younger people. So it's really neat to see their healing process and some of the things that they're going through and helping them through it. Kelly, you're going nuts. Um, I learned a new card game with my mom. She calls it 4x4. Four four. It's actually, there's a different name for it, but my mom renamed it because she hated the name. And so it's four players, and you play with eight decks of cards. It's pretty insane. It's super, super fun and challenging. Um, and last weekend, I think it was last weekend, my sister and her brother-in-law came up. They cooked us a really nice dinner. We had some haddock. We had some tri-tipped beef, I think is what she called it basically like steak in my opinion we had not roasted carrots 
so she cooked them in a pan but they kind of tasted like roasted carrots and they had a really nice herb to it that just like I couldn't stop eating the carrots <laughs> so that was pretty exciting there was mashed potatoes homemade bread she makes homemade bread oh god I love her homemade bread so that was a nice treat and then we played some cards we did some drinking um and it was just a really nice bonding experience I believe that's it for updating on what's changed and then in terms of mental health, like, like I had mentioned, I'm really back into the adult coloring. It's a really good way to center myself, give myself something to focus on that's not negative thoughts or thoughts about what I should be doing or, or what I need to do. And it really just helps me kind of live more in that moment. And so I highly recommend trying it if you haven't tried it yet. It's super, it's almost like meditative. Um, and it just feels good. And then when you're done with it, you know, you accomplish something amazing that you had worked on for a while and it just feels really gratifying. Um, my computer screen might close. Callie is behind it and she's kind of padding at the back of the computer. So we will see what happens. Um, and then the other thing for mental health, I have started walking again now that it's not very cold. And that also helps me kind of live in the moment, but also sometimes allows me to kind of think through some of my feelings and let them go by you know, like working them out, kind of like going to the gym for some people. And also I usually listen to an audiobook, So it's like a two for one, like I'm exercising without really focusing on the exercising. I also started Zumba again, which makes me forget about things that are stressing me out. And of course it's healthy because you're moving. So I started doing some more journaling and I'm kind of learning different types of journaling and different ways you can use your journals. And one of the things that I'm pretty curious about is called a junk journal. And so anything, they call it Ephrema, Irma, <laughs> I have no idea how to say it. Um, so basically stuff that is intended for one time use, like ticket stubs or a map of like the, uh, theme park you went to, um, hotel receipt, menu, anything that is significant to you and you can put it in this journal. And then it's kind of neat because it's made out of whatever you want to make it out of. So they suggest, whoops, one of my pictures came out, sugar making it out of like the, the base of some cardboard. And then you can put your pictures in it. You can put any kinds of paper in it. You can put envelopes in it. You can have your papers fold out and out and out. So I had just started it and I have got some photos from getting ready for my wedding and shopping for the wedding dresses. And then one that goes to my best friends. So this is my best friend from work. We were LNAs together. And then this next one is my best friend from high school. We're still friends. We don't get to see each other very much, but that's okay. And then I found this really old picture of my mom. And I looked like this my senior year. And I think she's a senior in this picture. So that's kind of funny. And it was in here somewhere. So I'll have to figure it out and put it back in. That's been pretty fun. And I think it's time to wrap it up. I need a little sneak of coffee. Basically, that's it for now. I look forward to talking to you again in about two weeks. And in the meantime, do something to fill your cup and happy knitting. Bye.